My name is Arielle Hyatt and I run a company in New York City called Cyber PR and we represent a hundred musicians and bands and we help them with their online digital publicity. Cyber PR is a term that I made up which basically encapsulates what we do at my company which is digital publicity and we have four areas of focus in our publicity campaigns online bloggers, internet radio stations, um, podcasters, and social networking websites. Well, the money is in the expertise of the, of the business. So for example, in my business, I give away a lot of free information to musicians. Musicians aren't known for being the wealthiest group of people. A lot of them cannot afford to hire me as a publicist at cost of $1,000. But I give away a lot of free information. I educate them on how they can begin to build their bottom line. I educate them on the, the tips and the tools that I've been discovering and that I use for my own clients. And then they use that information to help build themselves up. And then when they finally can afford a publicist, they look to me because I'm the one that was giving them good information that they found helpful. I can't tell you how many people call us and say, I've been reading your newsletters for years and now I'm finally ready to work with you. Or I saw you speak six months ago, may I have a consultation? So it's, it's that goodwill that it's really fostering. And it, it's especially for companies that are you know, private and guarded about their information, they don't want to give away their information. But if you think about it, when someone calls your company and they want to know what you do, you give away information. You're giving away information all the time because you're trying to enroll that client into working with you. If they don't know what you do, they're never going to hire you. So the technology that, that we teach our clients is give away a little something, and if they like it, and once they're educated about it, they will want more. And that's, that's a lot of the conversation here at this conference, which is about giving away some music and offering something else that people see that's valuable, and they're willing to pay big money for it, not just $20 for a CD, but Trent Reznor comes up over and over, Nine Inch Nails, $350. It's a lot of money. Bloggers are becoming more and more important um, in every industry. It's not just the music industry, although the music industry and the technology industry tend, tend to be the, the taste-making industries where technology like this is gaining traction. Bloggers are important because they're citizens, they're consumers, and they're also journalists. So there is a trend right now, especially in the United States, of not really trusting advertising and not really trusting, you know, top-down type of media. Uh, if you remember, Dan Rather had to retire recently because a blog exposed that CBS had been doing, uh, you know, their re the whole thing was debunked by a blogger, um, that report that had been done about George Bush. So bloggers are citizen journalists that tend to sometimes be a little bit more in touch with people and they tend to be a little more candid. They're not run by corporations. They're not motivated by advertising dollars. So blogs tend to be the voice of the people. You know, who are you gonna trust? Someone that you feel an affinity towards that's personal, where you can actually comment back and they respond to you in a two-way conversation? Or are you gonna respond to a talking head in a box with advertising in between it? I mean, I just think in this new day and age of social media and social interaction that the internet has so amazingly facilitated that blogging is a natural outgrowth of a way of communicating with experts who are open to hearing feedback from consumers. There's been a very interesting conversation in the music community and I think where the record labels really ran into trouble is they never asked their customers what their customers wanted. They never thought about that. They had a very um, consistent way of promoting music, top down, put it on radio, put it on TV, um, and let people kind of get exposed to it where it's omnipresent and then they'll buy it. And that was just a simple fact. And the fact that now there's a two-way conversation happening where the consumer can weigh in has become so important. And it's, I really believe it's why the, the, a lot of record labels are, are having trouble right now. It's because they never thought about feedback. And what internet platforms do 
is it facilitates a two-way conversation and it allows access to people and especially artists that are willing to play in this game and actually communicate with their their fans they win the game another thing that's interesting too is is not only is it for the artist to communicate with the fan but it's for the fan to communicate with the fan Fans are passionate. People are passionate about music they like. And I think it's very important for people who want to connect, to connect around their taste and what interests them and drives them and turns them on and gets them out of bed in the morning. So if you are like really into David Bowie, and there is a David Bowie forum where you can meet people that have the same opinions about the thing that you love the most, well, this is a great place to meet people. It's a community builder. Well, we talked about it today a little bit on the panel, and, and some people that were here, Corey Dennis is here, and she says, get a fifth Beatle. The fifth Beatle is not George Martin anymore. The fifth Beatle is your digital strategist, your online band member, who's the person, you know, it used to be the street team manager or the fan club manager, always a very powerful position in the music business. The, the person that ran the Beatles fan club was really well known in, the, in that community as the facilitator. They were the one that had access to the band and access to the fans. And that's a critical person on your team. So for artists that are worried about the time constraints, I always say, get your biggest fan and have them manage your social communities. And this works in the, in the business world as well. If you think about Microsoft, Robert Scoville was the first huge blogger who was on the inside. He was blogging about Microsoft, the good and the bad, the wrong and the right. And of course now he's a household name in the blog community. But it's, it's companies like that that had the foresight to put someone inside their walls and admit when there were problems, admit when maybe it wasn't going so well. Um, Southwest Airlines has also done this, where they have people from the airline communicating with the customers, and the customers love the brand. And they love that they can contribute to the outcome of the brand. And so this is where the music business is just beginning to catch on. Like, oh, people love our brand, they love our music, and they want to they wanna weigh in, they want to contribute, they want to be part of the, of the club and not approached as if there's some sort of outside thing that, that's being preached to. So it's bottom up. Where she